Welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. This time we're talking about this, my 9mm 1911 project, which I have taken to calling SOS for the Son of Speedmaster. And um, that name has a story. The uh, genesis of this pistol actually goes back a little over 35 years when I worked for Detonics Manufacturing in Bellevue, Washington. At the time, um, they had made a movie prop gun called the Speedmaster for the 1984 Tom Selleck movie, Runaway. And this was meant to be a sort of high-tech version of the 1911 for the near future. What it was, was a Detonix Combat Master slide mounted on a Scoremaster frame with a long barrel and a significant barrel weight on the end of that barrel. And it looked good in the movie and it worked a treat as a prop gun firing blanks the real-life version, firing 45 ACP, did not have so happy a time. In fact, I don't think they ever actually got it working properly. But at the time, I thought, well, you know, that's a lot of unsupported weight out on the end of that very long barrel. And I, it always been in the back of my mind that what if the barrel weight was fully supported or even independent of the barrel of the gun? And that idea kicked around in my head for off and on for decades. I didn't like dream about it at night or anything, but I did think about it. And last year when I decided to do a 1911 project in nine millimeter, I decided to put my, uh, put my idea into motion as it were. And the result of that is the gun you see before you now. Now we're going to get into this in great detail on the tabletop, but the basis of it was a Tesis Duty 245, and then I purchased off eBay a Rock Island Arsenal, Rock Island Armory, RAA, whatever, um, 9mm slide and bull barrel. And then, well, you know, let's get into detail on that on the tabletop where you can actually see what I'm talking about so much better. So the 9mm SOS um, with, I had a lovely piece of walnut, so I decided for custom grips, which unfortunately are cracking on this side, so they'll have to be replaced, but they do look pretty, don't they? <laughs> and um, my grip on a 1911 is front to back, so I don't worry much about the sides of the gun. It doesn't really do anything for me. So first off, let's unload and show clear. Chamber is empty, magazine is out. And since we're going to break this puppy down, you're going to get to see all of the mistakes I made putting it together, and there were several. So again, the frame and the internals are all from a Tesis 1911. And that's pretty good bones any way you look at it, because uh, they actually have a forged frame and barrel, although I didn't use the barrel, and uh, the internals are quite good. The trigger pull is really very nice, breaks at about three and a quarter pounds, and the reset is nice and short and crisp. Now, the trigger is very good, but it's not quite competition pistol good, so there's a little more work to do there. You may have noticed the weights at the front. And we're going to take this apart and show you all of that in detail. First things first, the weight has to be removed by taking out this Allen screw, which is what holds on both the bottom weight underneath the dust cover and the top weight, as you can see. And this is where you can see my mistakes. <laughs> because I had a hell of a time getting a weight set up to work. From there, takedown is pretty much standard for a short barrel 1911. Pop out the slide release and off it comes. And the recoil system uses a reverse recoil plug, of course. This is an EGW recoil system and it is a semi-captured recoil system. You can actually insert something right here 
and that will allow you to remove the plug while the spring is under tension. But since I don't have the stupid little piece of bent wire, which is how you do that, I'll just take it off this way. And you can see they use a flat spring, which is very useful because it allows you to get more spring in a shorter area. So the short slide doesn't need a compound spring system like normal RIAs or a lot of the compact guns. Also, as a consequence, it doesn't have the compact spring system that those guns have that wears out every 500 to 1,000 rounds. <coughs> Excuse me. Barrel comes out like every other 1911 barrel in the world out through the front of the slide. And you can see this is a bull barrel. And that is important because it's one of the things that allows you to have such a short slide is that you've eliminated the bushing. Colt, as I noted in the Detonics video, um, got around Detonics patent on this by having both a bushing and a bull barrel, but the bushing was large enough to pass over the locking lugs. And that works, but I wouldn't call it good. So, the slide is fitted with a Novak non-adjustable rear sight and the Novak front sight. And this weight is steel. I tried the first one in aluminum. It worked poorly and wasn't heavy enough. So I made one out of steel and it did not sit straight in the gun. So I inserted a set screw to hold it in position in the gun. Eventually, in the interest of craftsmanship, I'm gonna have to replace this with one that fits better. But for now, it will do. The entire gun and the weights are coated in gun coat, by the way, which was contributed by uh, Chris from McAllen Tactical. Excuse me, McAllen Defense. Not McAllen Tactical, who are, sadly, he has gone on to greener fields. And McAllen Defense is no more. This weight is made out of aluminum. And I fashioned it after I had shot the gun for a bit with the steel weight and determined that I wanted another ounce and a half or so weight at the front. I did hand cut checkering on the front strap. I blended the flat main spring housing and checkered it. I have not yet modified the grip safety, but I almost certainly will. Now, the super long dust cover uh, is courtesy of my friend Ernie, who is a godlike welder. And you can't really even tell where the weld is from the outside. You can barely tell from the inside. And he is just really, really good at what he does. Oh, I also undercut the back of the trigger guard and checkered the bottom so that my support hand has good traction down there. It's a small touch, but it helps. So, that's all the various bits of the beastie. Frequently asked questions about this gun are, is it heavy? Yes, it's 40.1 ounces. It's not excessively heavy for what it is, but it is heavy. Another question is, what's it for? It's for shooting action shooting matches, which I like to do. Uh, action shooting international, a very casual action shooting. Very friendly, very nice and laid back. And uh, at my age, I appreciate that. <laughs> and uh, it's very well suited to that because you never have a string of more than 10 shots in a row because they want to accommodate as many people as possible. Now the question is, why isn't it a 2011? I couldn't afford a 2011 frame. Uh, 2011 frames go for more than I paid for the gun, the entire gun this is based on. <laughs> and they're just out of my price range. And final question is, is it better? Better than what? It's better than a 9mm 1911. Um, I've fired 2011s, I've fired CZ Shadows, I've fired conventional compensated 1911s. It's not better than them. It might be as good. If not, it's so close that I'm not skilled enough to take advantage of the difference. So, you know, overall, I have to call it a big success. Most importantly, I did it. <laughs> and it kept me off the streets and uh, kept me from spending excessive money on important things like ammunition and food, and, you know, that sort of thing. 
But uh, this gun all in, excepting labor, which was, since it's a hobby, doesn't count. Um, this was about $500 less than a 2011. So, saved money, cool project, fun time, and it works. And in fact, it works really well. I'm a couple thousand rounds into this gun by now, although only about a hundred since I painted it. And um, yeah, it works. It works really well, and I really like it. So, son of Speedmaster. Long time coming, but good. So, please click the like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and if you really want to see more, you might be motivated to um, click the link below and support me on Patreon, because uh, all of this costs money. I do, I'm going to do it anyway, but it helps to have help. <laughs> so, stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.